Our COVID-19 coverage continues now with a closer look at the vaccines and why black people should trust them. We have watched multiple frontline healthcare workers, nursing home residents, healthcare leaders and lawmakers get vaccinated over the past week and a half. President elect Joe Biden just telling us there's nothing to worry about after he got vaccinated. But black Americans are worried and skeptical of the health care system. For some, just the talk of vaccines brings back decades of pain and trickery. Let me show you this. In a new 11 Alive Survey USA poll, one of the questions we asked Georgians was how likely would you be to get the coronavirus vaccine? Only 19% of black people said they are certain to get it. 33% Hispanic, 32% Asian, and 26% white. If you look at the numbers nationally, they're much higher. Black Americans continue to stand out as the largest group to say they'll pass on the vaccines, even though we're dying in disproportionate numbers from COVID. Joining me live now is one of Pfizer's principal vaccine investigators at Yale School of Medicine, Dr. Onyema Obuagu. He's one of the scientists who played a key role in developing the vaccine. Good morning to you, Dr. O. Good morning, Siba. You were one of the first to get the vaccine at Yale last week. How are you feeling today? Any side effects afterward? I'm doing great. It was a great moment to, to receive the vaccine uh, because um, not only do I do uh, you know clinical trials for the vaccine, but I'm also a frontline infectious disease physician caring for patients. And so it, it meant a lot to me to be you know one of the first in line to get the vaccine and really just to model to everyone, especially those of our community, that the vaccine is safe, effective. And as you rightly asked, I'm doing fine about a week off from my vaccine. You had a little bit of pain in the arm though, right? That is correct. I had a little bit of pain in the arm uh, a day after the vaccine and it went away at the after. All right, so, you yeah. know, in our conversation before you joined us live this morning, you told me that you're on a huge personal crusade to dispel some of the myths out there about the vaccine. So can we start with the stats? How many took part in the trials? What percentage were black and how many were actually given the vaccine? Yeah, so that's a gr great question. So um, in, in the, the phase three trials, there were 44,000 unique individuals participated in the study. And one of the, the focuses of the study was to ensure that it was adequate representation by racial and ethnic minorities. And so for the Pfizer study, and I think Moderna study also had some numbers, 10% of the participants were black. Um, in the Pfizer study, about 25% were Hispanic and about four and a half percent for Asian. So, you know, definitely represented um, a diverse uh, group of participants. And the majority of those participants at the time the data was submitted to the FDA, I think 90% or so had received uh, both, vaccine, both two doses of the vaccine. So 10% of black folks, you consider this a good sample size? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, the ad it's adequate representation. I mean, some of us would like those numbers to be better, but we think that enough of them and numbers to show that the efficacy of the vaccine uh, was similar between um, blacks and other races. Were any of the volunteers, Doc, o obese, suffering from diabetes or hypertension, any cancer survivors in the group? So that's a great question. So yes, the study did enroll um, a diverse group multiple comorbidities, um, that about 35% were obese, about 8.5% were uh, had a, a history of diabetes, about 25% had a history of hypertension. So it did cut across a whole spot of comorbidities that individuals had. And yes, we did um, include people who had uh, uh, cancer, except those who were actively on chemotherapy. So our anatomies and physiologies as black folks, they are different, there's no disputing that. A recent MIT study suggests coronavirus vaccines may be slightly less effective for black and Asian people specifically. It even suggested adding a small number of additional COVID-19 peptides to a dose to make it more effective. Is this legit? Was it ever discussed by your team? No, so uh, the, for the Pfizer vaccine, we have no reason to believe that it behaves any differently in, in blacks compared to whites. And that was the observation all through you know, the clinical trial uh, down to results that showed that for the protection against symptomatic uh, COVID-19, that the results were similar across the racial ethnic line. So I really want to reassure people in our community that the results also speak for us and, and um, hopefully that, that, that impacts our, our, our willingness to take the vaccine. All right, and just finally here, Doc, having a hard time hearing you. 
How do you know that it's just as safe and effective in brown and black bodies when it's been tested on more white people? I think that's the big thing that people want to know here. Yeah, so again, I want to reassure everyone that the, the trial represented both um, white, black, and brown communities, and that the studies found equal efficacy and no difference in safety signals between uh, by race and ethnicity lines. And so it's, you know, one, one last point I want to make is that, you know, disease disproportionately affects black and brown people. And, you know, I would hope that um, now that we have at least one pathway to protecting our communities against disease, that we can, you know, galvanize efforts to try and get our communities to get in line, roll up their sleeves, get the vaccine. All right, Dr. Obuagu with Yale School of Medicine. We appreciate your time, especially during the holidays here. We know it's a busy time for you and your family. Father of three, happy holidays to you and the family. Thank you very much, Shiva. All right, thank yeah. you.